Let's welcome on board Ajit Srivastava from Dimensions uh, Consulting to talk about what he's making off this mid-cap sell-off. Ajay, hi, good morning. Uh, good to have you on the question. The big uh, question, Ajay, on everyone's mind, looking at the broader market underperformance is, is this a shakeout, is this a distribution, or is this a big correction which is triggered off? I think it's a, <clears throat> one big concept is the deleveraging of the balance sheets of investors. Lots of the small cap and big cap were built upon large leverages, margins, whether they pledged their big caps and borrowed money or they bought, you know, borrowed against these shares. So a lot of it is bloodletting is because of this, your pure leverage issue, which is in the market. Second is, let's not you know, <clears throat> have uh, shed any tears. 5 10%, 15% is nothing for this market because the mid cap, very small cap, we call it the micro caps. They have grown by 100% two times, three times. So, you know, the issue is not that you price well by 5 or 10%. The issue is when those stocks get locked into the circuit filter, there is no exit for these guys. So the people, you know, the, some of the bigger stocks which you just shown up, which had 10, 15% a fall. Now, those can be handled because those people can at least exit the shares. The micro cap problem is you can't exit. And we've known this problem forever and ever that, you know, these shares cannot be exited at a time. So it's not about the price correction. It's nothing significant. 5% on an index which has gone up by over, you know, two times or three times the last one year is hardly anything or 10% or even 20% for that matter. It's the issue is, can you get out of the stocks? Yeah, fair point. I'll come to whether you or not you can get out of the stocks a bit a little bit later. But what's leading to this uh, step down, if I can call it that, and not really correction in your own uh, terms, given that it's only 5% in the context of the gains as well, the mid and the small cap index has seen. What's the reason behind that? And do you think part of it is also the flurry of IPOs that we've seen? People are profit-taking and deploying money into the primary market? See, it always starts from nervousness. I think the last two IPOs have left the investors broadly nervous about the market. Let's see what happens to the current three of them. Two of them are quite weak IPOs at this point of time. What happens to them post-listing? So one, the nervousness actually started last week from the IPOs and saying the market is kind of topping up. Next is that if you see some of the stocks, the exuberance of the investor was amazing, you know, absolutely amazing. There were stocks at mid-cap category, which are running up in P's of 90, 100 and thereabout. Now, there was a problem in sitting there in terms of valuation, who was buying this at those valuations. So there is partly a constructive correction on the valuation perspective. But really speaking, right now, the issue is that, you, you know, we were expecting the June quarter results would be bad. And they've come out to be relatively bad compared to March across the board. I don't think any company literally has run a better result, maybe apart from Power Grid, which booked an extraordinary profit. But everybody has got a bad result for June quarter, quite expectedly. And that's caused the nervousness in the market that if this recovery doesn't take place, what happens? And if you see stocks like Sequence Scientific, etc., good pedigree, nothing wrong in the pedigree. They just run up too fast compared to what the profitability of the company was. So part of the correction leverage, part of the real trigger was the IPO nervousness, which hit the market late next week, saying, is this party getting over? And therefore, the, the trigger started to sell off these stocks. Ajay, how different is this from 2017-18 is what we're trying to understand. Because look, there is there are phases in the market where mid-cap stocks will fall and there are phases in the market, mid-cap stocks will rally the way they've rallied. It is important to understand that what cycle are we in? How different is this from 2017-18 mid-cap meltdown? And how, uh, what is the resemblance and what's the difference? Let me rephrase it this way. See, I think the resilience in the market is that the regulatory mechanism has been much more strengthened compared to 2017-18. So in terms of margin, payments, leverage, control, that's the strong point of this market that people are not going to be overexposed. The market has, doesn't have a systemic issue with the exposure to the mid-cap. So that's the good part of it. And the second good part of it is that in 2017-18 and you know, thereabouts and post that, even, post that scenario, most people in mutual fund had not made money on mid caps at all. And small caps, certainly they had lost tons of money. Now, they have recovered quite a bit of the money in the last three years. So on the resilience quotient, resilience quotient is quite high at this point of time. There's no doubt about it. But the question is, is this a trigger, a longer term trigger? We believe it's a longer term trigger because there is a now recognized reality 
of the valuation of these stocks. And that is across the board coming to the market that, you know, when you run with P's of 30s and above and book values of 10s and above on a mid-cap stock, then you're really, you know, playing with fire at this point in time. So I think the correction of most stocks will be a little more longer term. It'll take its while for it to come back. It'll need the next quarter result to strengthen the belief back into some of the stocks. And, the, and number three, most important, is that IPO market needs to win robust because that's controlling the sentiment. If IPO market wobbles, you know, when the sentiment wobbles, it doesn't matter what the fundamentals are then. Just the sentiment in the market wobbles for these stocks. And the last point, <clears throat> that people who stuck with large cap, except banking, which we have been saying is, you know, it's going to be a problem area. All other large cap stocks have done well, whether it is the steel, commodities, whether it is the IT, Pharma has relatively been okay. FMCG has been pretty okay. So I not fallen on anything of any significant kind. So when you see the relatively that the larger, safer caps, which means less risk in the stocks, give you decent returns, then you tend to start to wonder why you're sitting with this volatile portfolio at this point of time. And lots of investors have only this in the portfolio. So what is the best way to deal with this? I mean, revisit your portfolio, look at where you understand, where you don't understand, uh, because you cannot go zero. And one should not go zero, because the economy is going to expand, earnings will come back. Now that the froth is getting out of the system, it's a matter of maybe eight, 10 days, week, we don't know. But for those who own mid and small cap stocks, what is the best way to use this sell-off to their advantage? See. No, okay, so, but we have an issue with this. I don't know what your definition of small cap is, but we believe that companies with a turnover of less than 250 or cross would constitute that turnover basis. It, you know, it, you really need to work very hard to locate those five cases out of the 250 crore or 400 crore universe to make a killing out of it. Most likely, you'll have one winner and four lo losses in that. So as a fundamental belief, we believe in a portfolio we should not have in Indian context. Anything from that sector, it doesn't matter what the company is, if it is listed and still has a turnover of less than 250 to 400 crore and it's been in existence for maybe a decade or so, you don't need to be in that company in the first place. That company has no future. It didn't, could not do it in 10 years. There is no chance of it doing it in the next 10 years. Now, that's you leave it to the realm of the speculators. Now, you come to the sector which is 400 and above. That's the sector you play with, say, auto ancillary. Now, that's it's a very, very strong sector because it is selling to a large market with an export pool. So you can be safer in the sector. Chemicals, you've seen today also, there have been a lot of tariff barriers which the government has benefited and given to chemical companies. And therefore, you can be safely in the chemical companies. In the pharma space, you know, the API space, unfortunately, has got valuation which is very, very much at premium compared to last 20 years average. So you want to stay away from the API space in the pharma for some time to come if the company is about 400, 450 crores. If you've got a company which is in specialized spaces, specialty chemicals, yes, you can go it. So between auto ancillary, specialty chemicals, and a little bit of retail, I think that's the three places where you can be. And when I say retail about who own the brands, they have to be, you can own the space and you can be in the space. But roughly speaking, anything below 400 crore turnover, I think it should not be part of, you must have a very, very good reason why you got to be in the portfolio unless they belong to auto ancillary and specialty chemicals and specialty pharma. Okay, so, uh, you know, Ajay, that was a great strategy, a very clear, concise strategy, putting it in numbers of how retail investors should put their money in mid and small caps. Thanks so much for sharing that uh, with okay. us.